Good morning friends and welcome back to the homestead. So today we are doing something fun. We were invited to a friend of ours that we just met through YouTube and Instagram and they invited us over to their new farm because guess what guys? They are getting bees and I have been wanting to learn about bees so they invited us down while they go ahead and put in their new beehives. Super excited. Kind of nervous because I've never worked around bees. So they did give us some tips and that was not to wear dark cl clothing because bees do not like dark clothing and to not eat bananas. So he said he's going to tell me about that story when we get there. So I'll let you guys know why not to eat bananas before you mess with bees. Super excited. So I am also taking them some of our plant starts, some of our pork, and some eggs because currently they are living in their trailer as they fix up their farmhouse. We are definitely going to do a tour so you guys can get to know them and what's going on on their farm. So let's head on over. All right, friends, we've made it. We are finally at our friend's house. All right, friends, so I am here with our new friends, Robert and Sherry, and they are new here to Kentucky, and we came out here so they can show us how they take care of their bees. They just got some new beehives over here, and wow, thank you guys so much. That was amazing. Like, I've never <laughs> done anything with bees before other than swat them away, right? <laughs> So that was a lot of fun. I got a lot of hands-on and that was really, really cool because I'm a hands-on learner. I can read a book and watch a movie and it just doesn't sink in. But that, I'll be able to remember that. And so they're definitely coming to the house to show us how to do it once we get our bees. For sure. We'll definitely come down. Whatever you need. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. I can't thank you guys enough. That was so much fun. Please tell me a little bit about you guys. I mean, you made the big move to Kentucky as well. Did. Did. Tell us about yes. that big move. What happened? Well, we're from the Pacific Northwest, Vancouver, Washington, to be exact. That's from Portland. Yep. That's how most people know it. It's not Vancouver, Canada. Sorry. <laughs> not that far. Um, but yeah, we just, uh, we, we've always had the thought in mind to one day have a homestead, you know, land, and self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, we originally thought it was going to be when Landon was out of the house. Landon is our son. He's 10. <laughs> um, but it just got to a point where it got too expensive in Washington and we looked for land there. We couldn't afford it. We had the means to sell our house and use the profits to come out this way where we can you know, buy more, more money. Yeah, kind of piggyback on it. We got just over four acres out here and over 2,000 square foot house. We were in a 1,700 square foot house, which was plenty, mm -hmm. but only on a little less than a quarter of an acre. So we did chickens and bees back there, but you really can't do much there. We had yeah. most of our backyard was a garden, and then half of our front yard was, you know, a perennial garden. So there's no grass or anything, but out here we got plenty of room to be able to really ramp up production and really raise a bunch of bees. So, New animal, yeah. Yay. What are the animals? What do you have plans for animals? So right now we got a son. <laughs> uh, that is an animal, yes. We, we have a dog. We'll probably get another dog uh, for too long. Uh, but we're doing bees, and we have the chickens that we just got for laying hens. Yeah. Uh, we'll do meat birds eventually. Uh, might do some guinea fowl or something to help take care of the ticks out here. Yes. Um, but then we want to do pigs. Uh, and then we're talking about goats or sheep or alpaca, wombat, that type thing. We're, we're not sure what we want to graze all this, but something. Maybe rabbits. We might we do about, rabbits, too. Yeah, we thought about rabbits for meat, but we've never had rabbit meat. I know. So That's what we're not sure yet. Yeah. But it could be something that, you know, we, we breed them and sell them as rabbits or pets. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or Sky's harvest the angora. You, know? you can do whatever we'll you see. want. <laughs> Sky's the limit. Yes. Um, tell me a little bit about the bees. So how did you get into bees? So I used to work at the Portland VA, and we started a program there, me and my coworker Scott Hoffman. He led it. I was his, his lackey, but um, <laughs> we started a program teaching veterans about farming and gardening and agriculture. It was called VA Farms. 
Uh, there was 10 sites nationwide that got the pilot money. Uh, we were lucky enough to be one of them, and he wrote the program. Uh, in our first year, we found out another VA was doing beehives, and they were using it for therapy, for PTSD, for camaraderie among veterans, for uh, rehab as far as being able to move around and stuff. And we wanted to use that modality too, because that was one of our big focuses of the program is in increasing mental health among mm -hmm. veterans. And that sense of purpose that gardening and farming and raising bees gives was huge. So it really worked out. But I decided after finding out the other VA was doing it that we should have it. You know, we had a greenhouse, we had an in-ground garden, we had berries, we needed bees. So I was able to get the approvals to get the bees in. And I figured if I'm going to do it here at work, I might as well do it at home too. And I had a built-in mentor from work. So it really worked out to be able to start the bees. And I think they're really fascinating. And I can talk your ear off about it. <laughs> But uh, I'll leave it at that. They're just amazing creatures, so it's, it's been a lot of fun to be with. I, th I think the bees are amazing. I mean, they do a lot for you. They do. What is your five-year goal for your property? You know, we, we saw you interview um, 60 Acres and Dream, mm -hmm. and we're like, I bet that question will come up. Yeah. <laughs> so we wrote a question. bunch of stuff out, actually. We only really got to year four. Okay. Because I think year five is really our reassessment year. But in this first year, we want to get the house split away. Yeah, on to year two. Yeah, year two, um, we want to expand the apiary. We've got four hives now. I want to bump that up, uh, really get some honey production going. Year two, I think we're thinking about really trying to square this away to where it's safe everywhere in there. You don't have any issues. Yeah. Nothing falling down uh, and more usable. Um, we want to get our greenhouse up and running second year. Uh, so we really do a bunch of starts, uh, be able to overwinter a bunch of Maybe, maybe even house plants. We'll see. Mm -hmm. um, what else do we want second year? Meat birds second year. And butchering year. pigs. Yeah, we definitely want to have our own pigs to butcher in year two. Then three was another kind of reassessment. Uh, hopefully by year three we're having some kind of income. Mm -hmm. uh, but between year two and three we're really going to have to figure out if we need to get regular jobs again. Mm -hmm. We're kind of in the fortunate position not to have to worry about it right this second. So, you know, in year three we really want to dial in our garden, which will be huge, and hopefully by then producing well. Uh, year two and three are farmer's market years we want to get in. Yeah. Uh, the farmer's market stuff. We got one right down the road here next to the extension office. Uh, so we want to get into that. But, you know, it's, re it's really just about figuring out where our attention needs to be between now and year five. And year five, it's going to be, okay, what's working, what's not. Um, so they also have a YouTube channel, and that is how we found them was through right. YouTube and Instagram. Guys, we're building community here. We are just moved to Kentucky as well. We don't have any family here, so we're trying to reach out to like-minded people like us and just learn off of each other. We're learning. They're learning. I definitely want you to check them out. So I'm going to let you guys introduce your YouTube channel, what you talk about, and what your plans are. Sure. Do you want to do it? So our, cha our channel's called LSR Adventures. It's spelled out all fancy like, but it's pronounced LSR, Landon, Sherry, Robert. Okay. So um, we'll, we'll probably throw up here how to spell it. Um, and then on Instagram, we actually don't have an Instagram account. We just have the hashtag one because I'm kind of lazy. I just want to start another <laughs> Oh, that's yeah, like, you know, I, I just want to post on my account and I can hashtag it. It'll be mm -hmm. fine. But it's hashtag LSR Adventures. Can you as well. spell that out? So it's E L L E S S A R E Adventures. Yeah, so our channel, um, it started out our journey over here. We mm -hmm. sold our house and you kind of see where we came from to where we are now. We drove across country, we drove down through California and then all the way across here to Kentucky in our travel trailer over here with our son. <laughs> and found a house. And so that's the beginnings of what our channel is. But we really want to try to start separating things out. We want to do part of our channel will be dedicated to our home improvements and getting our house in order. A lot of it will be LSR farms type content. So what we're doing here as far as developing our garden and our apiary, our barn eventually. And then we'll probably still have a little bit of LSR actually adventures where we go out and do stuff and we show you what we're out doing. A lot of Pokemon Go. Yeah. <laughs> we like to go check out different places and oh, find Pokemon. There, <laughs> they've actually explored more of Kentucky than we have, and we've been here almost a year now, and they've definitely explored a lot more. I've been watching their channel like, wait, I need to go there. <laughs> there there's lots of cool places. There's, it's a lot to get a homestead started. It's true. It really is a lot. It's, it's hands-on, 24-7. You can't leave. But lots of lists. Lots of lists. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. 
but friends definitely check out their channel they're a lot of fun um get to know what they are doing here in kentucky as well as their adventures that they're doing and their house project that is an awesome house with so much potential and i am really excited to see what they're going to be doing in that house as well as how this layout of their property is going to turn out as they continue to grow it so i hope you enjoyed this please check out we're going to put their description down in the bottom as well as the top lsr adventures right yep okay <laughs> If you want to look at the bees real quick, I know they're, they're pretty fascinating, so you can check them out real quick. These are the packages. So we just went down to Kelly Bees, it's a Man Lake distributor, and we picked up four packages. So in each one of these packages, there's a feeder can, there's a queen, and then bees. They're all supposed to be inside of the packages, uh -huh. but some of them found their way out. So. so when we install these, we'll have to keep the queen sequestered in a queen cage okay. for a few days. But. See, if we get another little bit of a sun break, it'd be a perfect time to do it. <laughs> so a question I always get is, why Kentucky? Why? Yep, yep. So <laughs> why Kentucky? I'm going to ask you guys. <laughs> All right. Who wouldn't want this? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. that's, that's funny. We get the same exact question. I actually just got my hair cut yesterday. I'm like, why? I'm like, you don't know how good you have now. Right. Uh, Cost had, of living was yeah. one of the biggest ones. We had three states in mind. Uh -huh. It was Kentucky, Arkansas, and Tennessee. Arkansas, Sounds familiar. <laughs> cheaper of all three. Yes. Tennessee, expensive, expensive. all three. Yeah. And then it, it just came down to like the hunting laws here because we want to get into hunting because we, we haven't done that before, yeah, but that's something yeah. we want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so we just narrowed it down to one state and started Hunting and so. price, yeah. So the story with the barn, if you want a little history, yes. from what we understand, this section, the camera's in, was all tobacco, tobacco barn. barn. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got all the poles going across, which mm -hmm. I was like, how come they just use these sticks for poles? That, and come to find out, it was just to hang all the hang tobacco. All the tobacco. Uh, but then the last owner that had it, um, the dad raised a little bit of tobacco, but the son is the one who owned it. And he actually, if we go out here, you can see he's got cows up on this hillside. He raised uh, show cows here. Mm -hmm. So he had a little wash station over in that little section, all his tack, and then he kept his show cows up here on this little bit of pasture. So I guess there was a couple state champions that came out of this barn. Really? That's what he says. He said a lot of things. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I think our plan for it is to pretty much leave this for now. Hopefully it doesn't fall down. Right. Uh, but then but. <laughs> fix this up enough. We want to do a couple pigs in here uh, mm -hmm. eventually. Maybe a two-year plan to get pigs. But. Yeah. We've got electrical panel ran down to here, which is yeah. great. So There's a hydrant here and, got, and in that uh, yeah. um, concrete floor one. So we got one little space cleared out, and I we backed did. my lawnmower in there. <laughs> did you? Yeah, right over here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so see, we, the only one clean spot. We had to have a mower. Yeah. Yes. We got all kinds of friends. <laughs> yeah, we got like oh, 10 oh, more good dogs. So these are my first two toys. I got nice. the old Husqvarna mower, and then I got the tiller. The tiller, yeah. Nice. I haven't even got to wash them yet because we just bought our hoses. So. <laughs> like I need to wash these. Get the wax out, you know, polish yep. it up. So if you want, we can go over and take a look at the equipment and get yeah. ready to put the bees in. It's actually like perfect. perfect. Weather. Yeah, it's getting right. warm enough right now. Alright. They like it to be nice and sunny. If you want to take a look, I have this set up as it will be open. This is your inner cover. Okay. Kind of oh if you want to feel God. it. But this is all from fir trees, so they had lots of resin in my yard because you have a nice cedar and a nice fir right there. Uh -huh. It's like the wax, like a, it's or is that something different? Just tree resin, so the wax is a little bit different of a texture. Okay. Got here, and this is my favorite type, it's a J-hook hive tool. Uh, so you can come under this one, onto the next one, and then you can lift this out, and then you'll lift this frame out. I always lift the number two frame for the start of my inspection because it's going to be Alright, so we'll attach it to the frame. Okay. Uh, the queen needs to be oriented, so her candy plug, which is where she's going to come out of, uh, it's like legit candy and sugar. They'll eat her and release her. What we're going to do is take that whole container, we're going to shake the bees in. One at a time. Alright, friends, so we're about to go in and see some bees. We're going to put our suits on and head over there. So this is my spare suit. We only have jackets. Okay. We just run jackets. If you are nervous, I can get you a full suit and put the jacket on over it. No. I just no. want to do it. You have to be comfortable when you're in the hive or else you'll make mistakes. 
can't freak out. And if you make mistakes, the bees will let you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I was telling you earlier about don't eat bananas. Mm -hmm. I don't, I've never tested it, so I couldn't really tell you. A lot of beekeepers will tell you, and I, I believe them enough not to test it. If you eat a banana in the morning and you go and deal with bees, you have an issue because their alarm pheromone smells like bananas. Really? Yeah, so if you ever are in a hive and you start smelling banana Laffy Taffy, it's probably time to close that hive and leave it alone for a while. Because it, they're telling everybody, hey, there's something going on, there's an issue. Uh, all the guards will come up and start watching you, see what you're doing. Catching swarms is pretty fun. It's one of, I think, one of the most fun things there is. <laughs> it's been a challenge leaving the house lately. Like, <laughs> they like to go underneath the car. They're so cute. <laughs> Just loving 